Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Sergeant Eric Grip from the Philadelphia Police Department's Public Affairs Unit. Uh, we're here today to provide an update on a fatal officer-involved shooting that occurred this past Monday on Willard Street at approximately 12.28 p.m. Uh, Commissioner Atwell is going to provide an update, and at the end, she will take some brief questions. Um, just want to caution you in advance. As you know, this is a very active investigation, so we're going to be limited in the information that we can provide. Commissioner Atwell. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're here today, as Sergeant Grip mentioned, to provide an update into the officer-involved shooting which took place this past Monday, August 14, 2023, in the 1000 block of East Willard Street at approximately 12.28 p.m. To start, I want to acknowledge that during the press briefing that took place on scene on August 14th, 2023, we reported that the preliminary information indicated that the driver was outside of the vehicle at the time of the shooting. At this time, the evidence clearly indicates that the male was not outside of the vehicle and was seated inside of the vehicle at the time of the discharge. I understand and want to acknowledge the hurt and confusion that family and community members can experience when details of investigations change, and especially when they change in the very public way that this has um, occurred. In the name of transparency, I strive for our department to release as much detail as possible when we can do so without damaging the integrity of the investigation. That is why we preface all of our releases by stating that information is preliminary and subject to change. At the time we gave that information, that was the best information that we had available. And we always strive to clarify and update that information as quickly and accurately as possible. That's what we're doing here today. I also understand that the information I'm about to provide will raise additional questions. But allow me to again reiterate that it is our duty to protect the integrity of the investigation, an investigation that is concurrently being handled by the district attorney's office. I will now provide updates about the status of the investigation and we'll take questions at the end and we'll do our best to provide answers if we have them. However, I need to make very clear that I'm unable to answer any questions asked to the specifics of the evidence outside of what I will now divulge. Also, as I go over the details of the incident, I will be referring to one of the officers by number, officer number one, and a second officer as officer A. We use numbers to denote discharging officers and letters to denote officers who were at the scene during officer-involved shootings. So on Monday, August 14th, at approximately 12.28 p.m., District Officer Number 1 and his partner, Officer A, were in full uniform and operating a marked police car in the area of B Street near Westmoreland when they observed a Toyota Corolla with the Pennsylvania tag driving erratically. Officer A went over police radio and asked if there were any priority assignments involving a Toyota sedan. Toyota sedan. The officers followed the vehicle as it turned on Westmoreland, then left onto Lee Street and finally onto Willard Street. At that point, the vehicle continued along 100 East Willard Street, a single lane, one way street, westbound the wrong way. The vehicle pulled into a parking spot mid-block, at which point both officers got out of their marked radio patrol car. Officer A, who was the uh, driver of the police vehicle, approached the passenger side of the Toyota Corolla. Officer number one, the passenger of the police car, approached the driver's side door. Officer A attempted to open the passenger side door, and as he did so, officer number one was approaching the driver's side door. Sorry, I'm still not sure. Officer A alerted officer number one that the male had a weapon. As the male turned towards officer number one, officer number one discharged his firearm multiple times into the vehicle, fatally wounding the driver, sole occupant of the vehicle. The occupant or operator was transported to the Temple Hospital by police where he was pronounced at 12.48 p.m. Two knives were observed inside of the vehicle and then the vehicle was towed to the police garage pending a search warrant. Both officers' body-worn cameras were activated and captured the incident. As we do in all of our officer-involved shootings, 
Um, our officer involved shooting unit immediately began a thorough investigation. I assure our public that a fair and thorough investigation will take place by our department and I also want to assure that we will provide updates in a transparent and expeditious manner. But only when we can do so in a way that would not compromise the integrity of the investigation. So that's what we hope to do here today and we will continue to do so as the investigation continues. We'll always strive to be as transparent as possible. We recognize we have to provide the safety for the communities of, uh, that we serve and in addition to ensuring the safety as a, of our officers and their families. With that in mind, uh, we will take questions. Does the facts as you laid them out, how do they compare to police protocol in terms of officer shooting into a vehicle at a suspect? How do they compare here? Well, uh, that's what we're looking at now. So I don't know if I mentioned it uh, today, but I, I know I've mentioned it before. So our OISI, our officer involved shooting um, investigation team, they're doing a criminal investigation. They work in parallel with the district attorney's office, but our internal affairs division, or our, our internal affairs investigators, are also conducting an administrative investigation, and that's what we look into. So when we say we're conducting parallel investigations, we're looking into not only did they follow law, but did they follow policy and procedure? We're still combing through body-worn camera footage. We're still attempting to identify witnesses, and we have not yet interviewed the discharging officer. Um, once we get a clearer picture, um, I will be able to say with certainty and make a determination whether or not they operated within policy of the department. Over here and then over here. Um, Commissioner, what specific piece of evidence changed version was it the body worn camera videos the video from social media that was going around no so there we had access to body worn camera footage um, yesterday and again we're compiling all of our evidence we're uh, looking for witnesses we're looking for video uh, footage out in the neighborhoods but the body worn camera footage made it very clear that what we initially reported um, was not actually what happened so it was the body worn camera footage. KJ? Hold on. Hold on. Was there, um, when it comes to the investigation, did you guys talk to neighbors in the area? Or were any people on the street who saw this, maybe approached you guys and said, this is what happened? Is that kind of. Uh, good afternoon. There have been attempts to interview people. Christine Coulter, Chief of Detectives. There have been people from the neighborhood. We have several people who were interviewed, but the changing of the information that was originally reported came solely from the body-worn cameras when it was evident that the decedent was sitting in the car at the time of the shooting. But there have been people interviewed so far. I think we have two or three neighbors, and we're working to track down those people who posted um, videos of the incidents but have not yet been interviewed by police. Who initially said that the driver stepped out and lunged towards police? That I don't know. Was Iris Harry uh, holding the knife, and did he get a warning to, to drop it? Those are details that I don't think we're going to go into today. It is an ongoing investigation. Um, I want to mention again, it's very important, we have not yet interviewed the discharging officer. So we do not have the account of the discharging officer yet. Uh, we do know that there's footage out there, but again, I don't want to say anything or confirm anything um, or speculate on anything that could potentially jeopardize what we're reviewing. And Commissioner, if the discharging officer has not been interviewed and we don't know where that information came from, I mean, that's just a very drastic detail that, you know, looking at video, you can clearly come up with an answer. So I guess everyone's just wondering, where did that initial information come from or what led to it being shared so publicly? Yeah, I, and I share your sentiment. I think we all do. And quite frankly, uh, before all of us even responded to the scene, that was the information that was relayed to us. So we're trying to backtrack that as well to figure out exactly how that was relayed to leadership uh, on the scene. But again, as soon as we found out that that was not what occurred, we did what we could to be um, as transparent as possible to get the information out there. You don't relay information to the public that you get from any Joe Schmo, right? I mean, when you talk to the public at any point, you've heard it from a fellow 
That is correct. So this is information that would have generated internally, not necessarily from someone that was a potential witness or out there on the street. So the again, the original origin of where that came from internally, we're, we're backtracking to find out how that happened. Uh, I don't have the answer for you today, but uh, we believed, we had a reason to believe on good authority that that's what occurred based off of what was given to us at that time. Yes, that is correct. And I have two questions. Um, were lights and sirens on when they were following your Rosari? Did he know that there were officers following him or trying to stop him? And you mentioned that uh, the gun was fired multiple times. Did you know how many times he was shot? I will leave it at multiple times, and he was hit several times, but I, I won't go into where or how many. You guys want to answer the question sure. about whether. Hold on, we're not done with the second part. Um, we're not sure if the lights were on. The officer has not been interviewed yet. At the time of the arrival of additional police officers, they were no longer on. So someone from law enforcement initially said the driver was outside. After seeing that body camera video, did you go back to that person and ask again? I don't believe we've established the origin of that. It was something that was called into police radio relayed to people from there, but we don't know where that came from at this time. So the body-worn camera is viewed as policy with by the officer-involved shooting team. As soon as they leave the scene, they get back to their headquarters, they start gathering evidence. At that point, they determine, obviously, it was different than what we were led to believe when we got to the scene. Someone called over police radio saying no, they called into police radio, not over police radio, because radio puts out information, and we were all under the belief when we got there that that was the circumstances. It became evident after viewing the body-worn camera that that's not what um, was revealed looking at it. And police realized this at what point? At when the body-worn camera, body camera, camera was viewed. Can you say why the officer hasn't been interviewed yet? Sure. Sure. Yeah, um, Officer, our policy is that an officer has 72 hours when involved in an officer-involved shooting to be interviewed. It protects the officer's rights as well as anybody else involved in it. So um, because it's a parallel investigation, the officer has the right to consult with counsel. They will be interviewed this week, but they do have 72 hours from the time of the discharge to be interviewed. And are there plans to release the body camera footage to the public? That's not up to the police department. That is now evidence, and only the district attorney could release it. Mr. Joanson. Mr. Joanson. So, uh, Commissioner, have you or is anybody from the department spoken to the family yet? Yeah. Yeah. I have not personally spoken to the family yet. Yes, uh, members of the officer involved shooting team have spoke um, with the sister, the uncle, and the father through interpretation. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner. Um, could you speak about the initial approach? Now, we understand that. Officer A yells he has a weapon, or there is a weapon. Speak to us, if you could, about their approach of the vehicle after they stop it. How do you interpret how they did that leading up to I, I will not provide my interpretation at this point, but I will tell you uh, we take this very seriously. The loss of life, I mean, it's a split-second decision, um, but it's very serious consequences here that we're talking about. This officer was placed on restrictive duty and was done so because there are questions. There are questions um, as to, um, you know, how this was handled tactically, whether or not policy was involved, and again, without, you know, Monday, Monday the law doesn't even allow us to Monday morning quarterback, so I won't do that and I you know I wouldn't do that anyway but all of that to say that's why uh, you know making sure we preserve the integrity of these investigations are so important so that we get the cleanest statements possible uh, and so I'm not speculating so I want to make sure again without offering uh, what my opinion is that I have all of the details available to me and until uh, those officers or the discharging officer provides at least a statement and we conclude as much as we can with canvassing and reviewing the remaining uh, footage, I, I wouldn't be able to say either way. Yeah, right over here. Right over here. Commissioner, you touched briefly base on this, but I've spoken with the community. They are clearly upset. They are hurt, not only because of what happened, but because of the message. 
how do you reestablish that trust if they feel like they can it's a challenge you know the question is how do we reestablish the trust sometimes I feel like we take 20 steps forward and it just takes one incident we take you know 50 steps backward and I'm hoping that um, you know our efforts in being transparent is at least the first step in that I understand the reticence I understand um, folks not really being sure whether or not they should even trust what we're saying today because of what we said initially but I'm hoping that they see that this is a genuine effort to do everything that we can to share what we know when we have it as we receive okay, it. Time for one more question. Was there a language barrier between the police and the driver? Uh, that I don't know. Could you describe the knives that were found in how long they were, what type of weapon they were? Sure. And did the officer I say knife or short just say weapon? Hello, everyone. I'm Detective Peter Marrero, the officer involved shooting investigation unit, and I'm the assigned detective on this. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question again, please? Yeah, can you describe the knives that were found? And if the officer specified it was a knife or just a weapon? Okay, um, I mean, so at this time, we're, it's, again, very early in our investigation. Uh, what I am comfortable disclosing at this time is that one appeared to be like a kitchen-style knife. The other appeared to be like a serrated folding knife. Was it yeah. in his hand or on the seat? It's early in the investigation at, at this point. Uh, I won't be sharing that information. No, Thank, you. Thank you. All right, folks, listen, um, uh, we appreciate your time. We'll be pushing out updates on this as they come in. As you know, the Philadelphia Police Department has a 72 hour policy released in the name of discharging officers. That will be tomorrow. We will push out that information provided there aren't any other. Uh, there aren't any threats to the officer or their family. As we receive uh, updates, we'll continue to push them out. We understand, like the commissioner said, there's going to continue to be more questions, but again, we have to protect the integrity of the investigation. So thank you, and we'll uh, push forward information as we get it. Okay? Thank you, folks. Officer Romero, can you